Hello everybody, welcome back to part two of this mini session on kernel EDMD. What we motivated in part one is that you have in EDMD a number of samples, M in this case, and then you lift these into a feature space, so a subspace that spans the or basis functions that span the subspace uh, of the observable function space, uh, monomials let's say, and these have the dimension capital N. So we have N basis functions, M samples, and we have these two feature matrices. And in order to solve the EDMD problem, the regression problem, we can simply compute the pseudo inverse of psi x and we're done. However, M times N, whenever M or N is large, this is expensive. What we can do instead is we take these inner product matrices mass matrix and stiffness matrix, which are n by n, and we get this problem, which is more efficient when we have a small number of features. Now, what we motivate is that we have often situations where we have a very large number of features in comparison to the number of samples we may have. So a couple of snapshots from a very large scale system, for instance. And the question is, can we arrive at a reformulation of this regression problem in order to compute the K matrix, or more specifically, to get the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of the K matrix or equivalent ones. Right? So we're not going to get this specific K matrix because it's going to be N by N, but we want to use the kernel trick to get a matrix that I will denote by K hat that is then allows us to do eigenvalue decompositions of a much smaller matrix, M by M in this case, and then move on towards eigenfunctions and so on. So what we're going to need as an intermediate step is the singular value decomposition of our feature matrix. And if you are uncertain what this is about, then I will add a link to this video where you can see the introduction on the singular value decomposition. So what we get if we do this is a product of three matrices of the following form, u times sigma times what I'm going to note by q here, or q transposed, um, that are of very specific type. So I will denote this equation by number one because I'm going to use a couple of them in order to derive the kernel version of EDMD in a minute. So what we get is a diagonal matrix containing the singular values on the diagonal, usually with a decaying number. In order for this to work, this would be an M by N matrix, but it has M minus N columns that are all zero. So in the economy version, this would be an M by M matrix containing, so whatever the smaller number is, the singular values on the um, diagonal, and U is also an M by M matrix. So this would be M by M. So M basis vectors for this space and also M singular vectors on the diagonal that tell us how relatively important these basis functions are in reconstructing the data. And then this Q matrix, which would be M by N in the economy version, excuse me, M by N in the economy version would be, so to speak, the coefficients that allow us to reconstruct the individual columns. All right, so we have the SVD and this has some very, very nice properties. What we know is that the columns of U and also of Q are pairwise orthonormal which means that we have u transposed u is equal to u u transposed equal to the identity matrix, which means well, this is an orthogonal basis or orthonormal basis even, um, and the same holds for the q matrix. q is equal to q, q transposed, also the identity matrix. And this is very nice because inversion is simply uh, realized by taking the transpose. And inverting this matrix is also easy because we can simply invert each element on the diagonal individually. Okay, And if there are zero elements, usually what one takes is the pseudo inverse, which neglects all the zero components. So I'm going to use the plus sign for the pseudo inverse in the following 
to denote that whenever some of these values should be zero, which means the basis vectors are irrelevant for reconstruction, this means reducing it to the non-zero spectrum. Okay, so what can I do now? I can use the SVD and reformulate this regression problem by simply adding this um, SVD into the calculation. Okay. So what I, can I do? So I'm, I have to take the pseudo inverse of this matrix and what I get is the inverse of the individual entries and then the order reverse, so standard rules of linear algebra. Um, this means that I can simply, by using this equation one, insert this and then inversion means transposing by these, for these orthogonal bases and then reverting the order. So what I get is Q times the inverse or pseudo inverse if we have zero entries, um, U transposed times Psi Y. And you see exactly that this is this expression and then the pseudo inverse. All right. So we have this and I'm going to give this a second number because this is what we're going to need as well. All right, and now we can continue from here by simply computing the specific expression for Q, which we are going to need later on. So let's compute what Q means. And so I simply have to, um, oh no, excuse me, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to express Q in terms of the feature matrix and these two matrices. So I can multiply by U transpose from the left by the inverse of sigma from the left and then taking the transpose. So what I'm going to get is Q is equal to, and again I'm using equation one here, um, sigma inverse U transposed psi x Transpose. So exactly what I said, right? You multiply from the left with U, from the, so U transpose, excuse me, then with sigma inverse, this is what we see here, and then you take the transpose to get Q out of the Q transpose. So what we get is, and then I can wrap this up, or multiply this out, what I'm getting is Psi X transposed U sigma inverse. Transposing this, is, it's a diagonal matrix, so it's no need. Um, and this is what I'm going to denote equation number three. All right, so we're almost there. And from these, we can then, this is the goal, reformulate the eigenvalue problem for EDMD. One thing that we need to remind us, though, is to argue why eigenvectors of the K matrix can be expressed in terms of a basis that is, that is defined by this Q matrix, okay? And so this is, I'm not going to go into the details. Um, again, this, all of this is based on a very nice paper on where the original kernel EDMD was proposed. I'm going to add the reference to the comment, um, where it's argued why you can do this. So it's basic linear algebra rules that tell us that the range of the K matrix, so basically all vectors that you can create by the column space of, of the K matrix is a subset of the range of the feature matrix that I, I, we used in the construction process, okay? So what it means that I want to have an eigenvalue problem from here, if I take a basis for this expression, then I can use the basis for this expression to express everything that lies in the range of K. Okay, And so by this argument, I can define that an eigenvector of the K matrix, which I will be denoted by Xi, as we have done before, can be um, well, created by the basis Q, right? So for the transpose, basically, if I transpose um, this expression, I get Q as my basis. Excuse me here, right? For Psi, this is the basis. For Psi transpose, this would be the basis. So I can take the basis times 
a q hat. And this is what I'm going to denote by equation number four. Right? And so this is a basis for this range. So what it means is, um, due to this observation, that whatever can be spanned uh, or is, lies in the range of the K matrix lies also in the range of this. A basis for this allows us to express everything that lies in the range of K. So if the eigenvector of K well, lies in the range, obviously, what we can do is we can use a basis for this one and express every eigenvector as a linear combination of these basis vectors. So, a lot of talking about the preliminaries, but what we need now is the singular value decomposition of our feature matrix. Then we have reformulated our Koopman regression problem in terms of the SVD. And we have argued how to compute Q and how to express an eigenvector in terms of basis elements of the SVD. So the SVD is really the central uh, linear algebra tool that we need here. Um, but this is only half the story. What we want to do is we want to express K in terms of inner products only so that we can use kernel methods. Okay? And so what we need to do is we need to come up with a way um, to do this and this is what is going to follow next. We said here right, the G and A matrix are N by N, so the wrong order if you wish. And now let's argue why we can do this um, with such a basis. So what we are going to consider is eigenvalues or the eigenvalue problem. Lambda Xi equal K Xi. So just swap the order than usual, but this is really K matrix times eigenvector is lambda times eigenvector, so the classical eigenvalue problem for the K matrix, but K is n by n, so it's large. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert all sorts of equations that we have given numbers here. First of all is I'm going to replace the xi by the q times xi hat, so it's a representation in the q basis, and then I'm going to add this definition for the K matrix. So what I'm getting is lambda times q xi hat, and this is using equation four, is equal to, and now I'm using four and two to replace the k matrix, this is q sigma inverse u transpose y, so what I'm getting is q sigma inverse u transpose y feature matrix Y times again the Q sigma hat, which is my Xi. Sorry, Q Xi hat. So this is my K matrix and this is my Xi and this is also my Xi here. So simple usage of two of the equations that we have derived here and what we can do now is we can also use equation three to get rid of the Q matrix that pops up here and here. Why? I will show you in a second. Okay, so um, well, this was two and four. And now we are going to use three to see whenever we have a, a Q matrix inside, we can replace it um, with this expression. Okay, so I'm going to leave the first Q because this can be simply erased from the equation later on. So what we have is this one, sigma plus or absolute inverse u transpose, and then we have psi y. And now for this q, I'm inserting this definition. So what I'm getting is psi x transpose, and then u sigma plus. Right, now I'm putting little brackets to make things a little bit more clear because I'm also giving names to things now. Um, and then Xi hat. Okay, so what we see here is this one in the middle actually reminds us of our nice A matrix here. But if you look at this, the transposed has uh, switched from the first 
uh, entry to the second entry. So what this means is that this is going to be an M by M matrix. And I'm going to name it A hat. So it has the same meaning basically as our stiffness matrix here, but it's M by M due to the transpose being on the second element, so M by N. Which is very, very nice in our setting where we have fewer samples than we have features. Okay, so now if you factor out the Q, you have sort of an eigenvalue problem um, in a different space for the A matrix. But the sigma and the U are not yet known, so this is uh, the question how to do something about this. Okay, so how do we get the sigma and the U in order to you know, get some sort of G hat matrix and then compute? So this is the final step we need to take. I know it's a lot to take in, but then I'm going to use the final piece of the board here to derive an algorithm where actually a very small number of steps can be used to really derive this. And then in the follow-up video, we are going to compute Koopman eigenfunctions from this and also show in code how this is done. All right. So, what do we need to compute sigma and u? Um, what I can do is first I, I will simply define in a way how the a hat is defined a g hat matrix. Just, you know, let's say out of curiosity, hoping that we get some relation like this, just putting the transpose to the other one so that we get again an m by m matrix. So, let's define g hat by guessing, let's say, um, that this is psi x psi x transposed, which again means, you know, there's the difference, the transpose was here, it's an m by m matrix now. Um, and so what I can do now is, we have already seen that the psi x can be expressed in terms of its SVD. This is what we have done before. So what I can do now is I can twice insert this, u sigma q transpose, and then transpose this, which gives me q sigma u transpose. And then a lot of things will factor out. So I'm using this equation one here, and I'm inserting it twice for this one and for this one. So what I'm getting is u sigma q transpose. And now for the second one, I'm getting q sigma u transpose. Right? And q times q, uh, q transpose q, you see, is the identity matrix. So this one um, vanishes. So what we see is u sigma squared u transpose. And now I can multiply from the right with my u matrix to shift this over. If I multiply by u, you see, again, u transpose u is the identity, so this one vanishes, and the u pops up here. So what we see is we get g hat u is equal to u sigma squared. Well, and this look, should look familiar. This is simply an eigenvalue problem again. Right? So linear algebra everywhere. And we like this one because it's an M by M and we have said that the number of samples is smaller. And so we basically have it. Um, let's summarize this in the algorithm and then maybe I will go briefly through this once more. To conclude, okay, so what's the algorithm about? First of all, um, step one is computing A hat and G hat. And let's just use G as an example, but it's the same for A, obviously. G hat, the entry IJ is simply the inner product between the ith column of x and the jth column of x. And so, as we have said before, we can now replace this inner product between these lifted spaces by a kernel function. So this would be k, or not the coupon operator, sorry, the kernel function, so lowercase k, for x, i, and x, J. Don't worry about the order because kernels have to be symmetric. This is also a symmetric matrix. Um, so this kernel function would give us, as we have motivated in the video before, an inner product between the ith and the jth um, row of this psi matrix. 
Right? And the same for A, obviously, but then we have to take a kernel between Xi and F of Xj. So next time step. Okay, so what we need to do then is to compute an eigen decomposition. of the G matrix, which will give us U and sigma. This is what we have motivated here, right? So we built these A and G matrix only in our products, only kernel evaluations, M times M of them. Um, and then we can uh, solve the eigenvalue problem for the G matrix. And this allows us to compute our, what we will call the K hat matrix. I've not given yet a name to this. The entire thing is what we will call K hat. Why? If we look at this, this is lambda Q Xi hat, Q K Xi hat. And so this is a scalar, I can shift it in. If I erase the Q, what I would get from this is lambda Xi hat equal to k hat psi hat, right? So this is the eigenvalue problem that we want to solve so that the size allow us, if we knew the space, is to reconstruct the psi, so the eigenvector of the large k matrix, and then use this to compute the eigenfunctions. So what we do is three, calculate k hat using this expression here, and then we are basically done. We can use, again, another eigenvalue problem of the k hat matrix. Which would mean k hat. And now this xi eigenvector basis or xi hat. Lambda. Okay, and so now what you see is a rather lengthy derivation, but really in the end it's not very hard. What we do is we define a kernel, we compute A and G, very similar to A and G before, but now it's using kernel evaluations. We do an eigen decomposition of the G matrix, we compute the K matrix using the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the G eigen decomposition plus our I hat matrix, and that gives us K, and then we can do an eigen decomposition of K hat in order to get Xi hat and the associated Koopman eigenvalues. Okay, so coded up in a very few samples, and next video is going to be about how to use this for Koopman eigenfunctions. Thanks a lot.